When it comes to garage door springs, it can cost a lot of money in parts and labor to have them repaired or replaced through a company. Garage Door Nation can help you solve any garage door problem or torsion spring issue on your own. We offer high quality garage door springs for low prices and expert how-to videos so you can get your next DIY garage door repair project started right away. Call us now at 1-800-280-4870 or visit us online at garagedoornation.com to purchase your garage door springs at a reasonable price. Ships out the same day. Hi, my name is Tom. I've been doing garage door repair for about 12 years now. In this short video, we're going to show you how to change out those garage door springs safely. We're going to go through the right tools you're going to need. And we're going to show you different parts of the garage door so you know what you're looking at. Thank you so much for purchasing your how to change out your garage door spring video. All right, so let's get started with the tools you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need safety glasses. You wanna keep those eyes protected at all times. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to use is the proper winding bars. It's very important to get winding bars to wind those springs safely. I'm gonna show you how these work in a few minutes. The next thing you're gonna need is a set of vice grips. These are used to set the cables. Everybody has a pair of vice grips. It should be pretty simple. And finally, you're going to need two wrenches, a 9 16 wrench and a 7 16 wrench. If you have power tools, it's going to make it a little bit easier, but I'm going to go ahead and show you in this video how to do it with just normal, everyday tools. All right, let's get started. I'm going to show you guys some different parts on the garage door so you know exactly what you're looking at. This right here is called the drum. This wraps around your torsion tube. So you got your torsion tube and your drum. And then your drum, your cable is what's wrapped around the drum right here. Your cable runs from the top of the door all the way to the bottom. And that's actually where it lifts the door. Okay, right now you have the bearing plate. And what the bearing plate has here, this is actually an end bearing plate. You got a 9 16 bolt right there. And on the back of it, usually you're gonna have a 7 16 bolt. So if you ever need to change out those bearing plates, which I always advise to do when you change your springs, that's how you take them apart, the 9 16 and the 7 16 bolt. This right here, you should never have to change. This is called a flag bracket, and this is part of the tracks. Sometimes these need to be adjusted, but you won't need to adjust them when you're changing out the springs. So this right here, this bracket is actually called your hinge, and behind that, this little guy is called a roller. This is what rolls in the track where the door goes up and down. You might have different types of hinges. It doesn't really matter for the changing of the springs. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to do is put your safety glasses on and then you're going to get a nice secure ladder. This is a 250 pound ladder which is more than stable for me. You want to make sure the arms are fully extended. And another thing that I recommend is always having another person out here when you're working on them. You never know if something happens and you slip off the ladder. You want to make sure that there's another person standing by if you do need to call somebody for help. So let's get, go ahead and get started on this by unplugging the garage door opener. So right here we're just going to unplug the motor if, in case somebody comes home and hits the button and you guys are working on it. That's the last thing you need. So right here we have a single spring system and what we're going to do is change it out into a double spring system. Anytime you have a 16 by 7 door you should always have two springs. The manufacturer sometimes will send you one but I highly recommend you switch to two springs. You're going to get more life out of it and you're not going to ever end up trapped in your garage door. So now we're going to show you why the spring is not working correctly. What you always want to do is lift the door up about three feet and what I always tell people when I'm in their garage is if it's heavy for you to pick up, it's heavy for the opener. If your door is heavy, it's not functioning properly, your springs are failing. So on this door, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up a few feet. And if you watch, it's dropping by itself. When the door is perfectly, when the spring's perfectly wound, what it's gonna do is stay perfectly balanced. So no matter where I put it, it's gonna be light and it's gonna stay there. It's not gonna shoot up and it's not gonna fall down. 
After you unplug the opener, you're going to want to manually release the opener just by pulling down on most models. So these are the two sets of tools we're starting out with, your winding bars and your 7 16th wrench. We're going to start by unwinding the spring. For safety reasons, I'm going to show you real quick what not to do. You never want to line up where the spring is in your face because you're going to be putting winds and taking winds off the spring. It's very, very dangerous to be in front of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to swing the ladder around and move to the other side of the spring. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the torsion your torsion winding bars and you're going to hold them tight in here and you're going to just loosen these two 7 16th bolts and make sure they're really loose. You're done with the 7 16th so now we're just going to slowly unwind this spring and I recommend using the same hands to do the unwinding and the winding. A lot of people will crisscross their arms and end up letting go of the winding bar and this has got a lot of torque on it so you want to be really careful as you're unwinding these springs. They're wound about 30 times. So I just unwound the spring about 30 quarter turns and the way I know that the spring is completely unwound is because if you look here the cables are completely loose and the cables are coming off. The cables will still have tension on them if there's still torque on that spring. If you have a two string system you need to unwind both springs then the cables will be loose. You never want to try to take apart the springs if there's tension on those cables. Now that we've unwound the spring, we could go ahead and take the spring off of the center plate right here. So now we're going to take the 9 16 wrench and these are two 9 16 bolts in the center brace that you're going to take apart. Now we're going to go ahead and loosen these drums up. The drums need to come off in order to get the spring off. So it's just a 7 16 We're just going to go ahead and uh, loosen these up. There's one, and we're loose. We got the one drum loose, let's do the other one now. Same thing, 7 16 So this is your torsion tube, you're going to grab the torsion tube firmly and just kind of shift it over and now it's going to now it's going to come down and just rest on your J bar there from the opener. This way you could get free to the spring. You're just going to be able to pull the spring right off of the end here and slide the new ones on. So right now this is what I was talking about. The torsion tube is resting on the J bar. It looks just like a J. Alright so now we're going to just pull off the old parts. Here's the old center plastic bearing. I'm going to pull the drum off. Put the spring off. So now it's all apart. One thing you do not want to do is leave that spring laying by. Let me show you why real quick. I'm going to show you firsthand here why you never want to leave a torsion spring lying around. A lot of guys do this, they'll leave them laying around and they'll step off the ladder and what happens is you're coming down from the ladder, you step on this. I know a lot of guys personally that have sprained their ankles on these. So you want to make sure to take this and get it completely out of the way. Put it somewhere you're not going to be stepping on it. So we're getting ready to put the new springs on. We've already taken out the old springs. Uh, these are the exact same springs except one is made to be on the left and one of them is made to be on the right. And the way that I remember is red never goes on the right side. So your black goes on the right, your red's on the left. I'm going to show you exactly how we load them onto that torsion tube right now. So I'm going to start with the red one because the red goes on the left. We're just going to take it. 
slide it on there. And then you're going to want to put your center bearing in. This was the old plastic one. We're going to put a real metal bearing in there that's going to last a long time and make those springs last a lot longer. So I'm going to take the center bearing here, slide that on, and then you got your black end. So then we're going to load this because this one goes on the right side. Just take it, slide that on. So now we're just going to slide them into the right spot. This goes over here, this one goes right here. Now we're going to put the drum back on. The way that I know this is the right side drum is because it's got a black mark on it. Usually the drums will be marked just like the springs. Just like the black spring goes on the right, so does the black drum. I'm going to slide this back on and then go ahead and grab our ladder back to get these in place. All right, so we're going to put this back on the center bracket. Sometimes you got to finagle with it. And then we're going to slide it right back into that hole. Now that we got it on the center bracket, we're actually going to take it and just slide it into that end bearing plate. Now we're going to put these springs back together. Grab your 9 16 wrench and your 9 16 bolts. I'm going to bolt it right back together. Now one of the things I see a lot that amateur spring changers do is they'll have it pushed all the way to one side. You want to make sure that however far out your bearing plate is, is the same distance you want the torsion tube out. So on this one it needs to be pulled out completely. Another thing you want to look out for is a lot of times guys will have the plate way up here and the whole tube will be bent like this. You want to make sure it's nice and straight and the same amount out from the, the wall itself. So right here is about completely parallel all the way across and then we're just going to tighten up right here. So right now we're going to take the cable and it slides right into this spot. A lot of times what will happen is it'll get caught up somehow where it's not locked in. I'm going to make sure that is put directly in there nice and tight and then you start wrapping it around the outer layer there. And then you just push it up against there. So now we're just going to tighten down these 7 16 The next step is what we're going to do is we're going to give this cable some tension. So we're going to take our vice grips, we're going to open it up to about the size of what this torsion tube is. So we're going to practice here, just put them on here, get it to the right, the right tight. Now we're just going to hold this down with our left hand, make sure there's tension there. Sometimes I pull it down a little bit and then you're going to just put it right up against there. So once again, you take the vice grips. Pull a little bit of tension on it, hold the tension with your left hand and put them down. So now it's like a guitar wire. Another thing that you want to make sure you do is make sure the cable's not caught on anything. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the cable uh, you want to make sure is running nice and smooth because a lot of times what will happen is the cable will get lodged on something, stuck in a crack or behind one of the rollers, and it won't be nice and smooth like a guitar wire like that. We want to make sure that this is nice, it goes and it's smooth all the way down to the bottom, it's not caught on anything. That's very, very important to making sure these springs are going to be set right. So now what we're going to do is do the right side cable. You're not going to need the vice grips. We already got the vice grips over there on the other side that's holding the cable. So now we're just going to put it in like we showed you before. We get it started right around the outer edge and just push it right up against that bearing plate. Now what I do on this side is I get these ready to tighten. So right there they're nice and almost ready to tighten. And then I just kind of pull down with my right hand and then tighten one of them. And now we have tension on the cable. 
Make sure you tighten both of them though. Perfect. So now our cables are set, our drums are correct. The cable's perfect all the way down. Now we're gonna go ahead and start tightening these springs up. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the springs. A quick lesson on springs. A full revolution is four quarter turns. For every foot high the door is, you're gonna do one full revolution. So if you got seven feet, you're gonna go 28 winds, 28 quarter turns. You can go all the way up to 30. Let's say you had an eight foot door, that'd be eight complete revolutions. So you're gonna go 32 winds to four, 34 winds. So right now, this is a seven foot high. We go 28 to 30 turns. And then we're gonna make sure the door's balanced. So let's go ahead and start winding these. I usually get started with one couple turns with my hand. So we're already at two. We'll go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, seven, 28, 29. I'm gonna go 29. And then we'll go ahead, like I said, and make sure it's all balanced. We're just gonna pull it up a little bit and get these tight. That's it. That's one spring knocked out. We gotta do the other side now. Now we're gonna wind the other spring. Same thing, I get started with my hand. There's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. This has quite a lot of torque on it, so make sure you're not leaving your fingers or head or anywhere around this because it's got about ninety pounds of torque. So people get really hurt if you don't if you're not careful. So now we're just gonna get these finger tight. Just pull it out a little bit and tighten this up. There's one. There's two. So now we're good. Now the springs should be done. So the door is done. We just got to take our vice grips off. So we're going to just pull up here. Cables are set. Springs are wound. Let's go ahead and make sure this door is balanced. We're going to lift up like we did before. And it's perfect. It's staying wherever I put it. So the door is super light now. The springs are balanced. The door is rolling right. You did a good job. All right, so now we're going to make sure there's cable tension at the top. Most garage door companies and amateurs don't even look for this kind of stuff. When you open the door completely, you want to push it up open and make sure the cable still has tension on it because a lot of times if this is loose, It'll jump off the cable when the door is coming down and you'll have a mess. So you want to make sure you have t tension on both sides. So let's go over to the other side here. And we're going to check this. We're all, all the way at the top. There's cable tension on both sides. We know we're good. If, for example, there wasn't cable tension, you'd have to put more winds on the spring or order smaller springs because a lot of the time people order the wrong springs and that means that there's going to be cable tension at the top. Another thing I recommend is don't open your door any further than this. There's limit switches on your garage door opener. So you're going to want to make sure a lot of people have it opening two feet past the opening. That's going to wear your springs out faster and it's going to cause the cables to jump. So just get the garage door to where it's open. That's all you want to do right here where it's evenly planked with the header. So now we're ready to plug the opener back in. That's plugged in, and then we're gonna take this guy, put it back in, now it's back in uh, automatic mode instead of manual mode. And then we're gonna hit the button on the wall and let the opener catch back up with where we got it. So let's go ahead. You're gonna see right here the trolley coming back up. See it? And there we go, we just connected. So now we're just going to hit the button again, run the door down. And it's working perfectly. So your springs are changed out, your garage door is working perfectly. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to go to our website 
send us an email and we'll get back to you right away. Thank you very, very much for your order and have a great day.